So one of the big priorities for Flight 7 was we wanted to, to do whatever we could to, to get some more confidence in the pitot-static system. And there was two ways we were gonna do that. First being GPS calibration methods or like a clover leaf, and the second, a static cone. So what's a trailing cone? Trailing cone uh, is uh, actually called out in AC 23-8C. It's something you know, we covered at uh, test pilot school. It's something that we've done on previous programs. And what it really comes down to is it's a way to get a static source that's suspended below the airplane and behind the airplane far enough that you're away from the bow wave of the air going around the airplane. So since most pitot-static air is not from the pitot tube, but from the static system, by taking that static source, instead of putting it on the side of the fuselage where there's all sorts of pressure stuff going on, by putting it well behind the airplane, you have a better chance of being closer to the actual ambient static pressure. For the Thorpe program, we had installed the hose for the trailing cone across the top of the vertical tail. For the Lance Air program, we decided to go off the bottom of the tail cone uh, just because it was the most direct route. So the gauge is inside the cockpit. You gotta get through the fuselage wall somewhere. How are we gonna get through the OML of the airplane, right? Just move of the day, all, all credit to Hawking. This is the old static port that we just briefed. Hawking came up with the great idea of using the old retired static port. Gives us a hole through the OML. Perfect. The other difference was that we weren't gonna be able to, to rely on a nice mechanical uh, connection like an Adel clamp. And then, uh, we're using these ADL clamps to uh, hold the tube down on the top of the vertical. Hawken and I decided that it made sense to use Gorilla Tape <laughs> to attach the very aft portion at the very back of the tail. And then we use Glider Tape <laughs> to hold that hose. Okay, so here we have the hose which we haven't installed yet in the fuselage. Comes out through the old static port. This is the new static port down the side of the fuselage, down the belly, and we're using the extra strong Gorilla Tape at the tail, and then the hose, the probe, and the drag chute. And then we used the alternate static air valve to switch between uh, ship static, which was the new uh, stock static port, and the trailing cone. Pull that up. See, it's red there. That's alternate. Red. For the, where there's oh, pointing, got it, got that's it. alternate. So <laughs> this would be normal. So some of the most interesting lessons from the Thorpe trailing cone effort uh, were the ground handling stuff, right? We all understand that once you're airborne, you're going to have a trailing cone suspended somewhere behind the airplane. But how do you get the airplane with the trailing cone attached from the hangar out to the runway and then from the runway uh, to airborne and then from airborne back to on the ground and then back to the hangar. So first we took the trailing cone, coiled up the hose and just set it in the cockpit uh, and taxied out to the end of the runway. Because I knew I was gonna need some help with that, Hawking came along, we just called as a flight of two. And we went down to the whole short area. Again, as usual, we pre-coordinated all this stuff with the Ramona Tower and they were very helpful. I'm on ground at Carmel 320 Hotel Lima with ground chase. We're over at uh, Chuck Hall Aviation uh, ready to taxi with whiskey. Once we got down to the run-up area, uh, we shut the airplane down, took the hose out of the cockpit, and laid it on the ground. Sid built. And we're about to ground from 320 Hotel Lima. We're going to sit down here for a second and configure the trailing cone. And I like to lay the hose out in sort of an S-shaped pattern, which minimizes the chances of a knot or something forming as you taxi past the whole short line and out to take off. Nothing feels cooler than walking around in a parachute with a helmet. I know. <laughs> I feel like an absolute dillweed. <laughs> then 
they're like, oh, he's good. He's got a beer, beer bong. So not only is he a, a dork, but he's drinking. Do you okay. have the handheld? Yeah, I got it in the car. Okay. Right. Yeehaw! Once that was done, I got in the airplane. I did the run up and it was time to, to call the tower to cross the whole shoreline. Ramona Tower, Stormont 320, Hotel Lima is with you, home short at 27 and ready for takeoff. Metro 320, Hotel Lima, Ramona Tower, flyby runway heading for now, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 320, Hotel Lima, clear for takeoff, runway 27, and just to be clear, it's going to be a little bit of delay on the runway here for the trailing company. Metro 0, Hotel Lima, that's approved, requested, sir, and on departure, fly runway heading, I'll acquire northbound, sir. 320, Hotel Lima, and uh, ground, you there? Ground here. As I crossed the hold short line, Hawken watched to make sure that there weren't any knots forming and the hose laid out real nice. I made sure to dive all the way across the far side of the runway, past the center line, and then come back to maximize the chances that the cone made it onto the runway without cutting the corner and going into the grass where it might get tangled in a landing light or something like that. Looking good. All right, here we go. Then with a positive call from Hawken on the radio, I stood at the power and took off, and Hawken was there on the handheld to let me know if uh, anything had gone awry. All good. This is Peter Graham. Can I text back on this frequency? Peter Graham, Ramon Tower. If I were to text back to uh, the hangars via Alpha. Thank you. Radio check. Radio check. Sorry about that. Uh, just uh, chasing an engine thing here. No problem. Everything okay? Uh, just trying to decide if the engine's running rough. Okay. But everything else is fine? Yeah, everything seems good. Uh, did you see the uh, cone get off all right? Yes, it, it came off just fine. We were center line. Everything was just fine. Perfect. Awesome. Nothing like over-preparation. 